Where did humans come from? What is our destiny? University of Arizona scientists are closer to uncovering the answers after a seven-year-long mission. OSIRIS-REx, in collaboration with NASA and Lockheed Martin, comes to a close. The historic event will be the United States' first-ever mission to return an asteroid sample to Earth. On September 24, 2023, OSIRIS-REx will drop a capsule over the desert containing samples from a potentially hazardous asteroid named Bennu that has a 1 in 2700 chance of colliding with Earth in the late 22nd century. OSIRIS-REx stands for Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security Regolith Explorer. Designing and building the instruments took up the first five years from 2011 to 2016. In 2016, NASA launched OSIRIS-REx from Cape Canaveral, Florida. In 2018, the spacecraft arrived at asteroid Bennu and surveyed the asteroid for more than two years. On October 20, 2020, the spacecraft touched down for a few seconds and collected samples of rocks and dust from the asteroid. Several days later, the sample was stowed in a protective capsule for delivery to Earth. On May 10, 2021, OSIRIS-REx began its flight back to Earth. It will drop the sample of asteroid Bennu at the Air Force's Utah Test and Training Range in the Great Salt Lake Desert on September 24, 2023. Well, I think the OSIRIS-REx mission uh, for the University of Arizona is a culmination of many former missions that were done. Uh, remember, the University of Arizona was the place that uh, mapped the landing site for the first lunar landing uh, on our moon. So there's a long history of uh, uh, astronomy and lunar and planetary sciences being uh, incredibly great at the University of Arizona. We are without question the number one program in the world and I think these missions are uh, emblematic of all of the foundational support that, um, that has brought us to the OSIRIS-REx mission. Not only will we learn new knowledge about how our universe was, uh, was started, but it's also a great training site for future leaders. Michael J. Drake former director of the U Arizona Lunar and Planetary Laboratory and lead principal investigator for OSIRIS-REx before his passing in September 2011, is credited as one of the original people who conceived the mission. When Michael J. Drake passed, Dante Loretta, Drake's mentee, stepped in as principal investigator and led the mission for the past decade. Loretta is now a Regents Professor of Planetary Sciences at the University of Arizona. The biggest challenge from the asteroid was the rocky surface. You know, we had done a historical astronomical campaign to characterize this from the ground and using space-based telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope. And we thought for sure the surface was going to be like a beach. Smooth, sandy, easy to get to, easy to collect a sample from. And it didn't look anything like that. When we got there, it was this rough and rugged and rocky horror. And we were like, oh my goodness, we really didn't design the spacecraft to encounter an object like this, let alone get down to the surface and collect a sample. But it all comes down to teamwork, right? We built a team, we were unified in our vision and our commitment, and these are some of the smartest people in the world, and they revel in challenges. So this got everybody fired up, and we got together, we sat around the table, we brainstormed ideas, and we came up with a brand new guidance system using the cameras to make the spacecraft smarter, basically, and ultimately let it make its own decisions as it was going down to the surface about how it needed to fire its rocket engines to hit what we called the bullseye of our Nightingale sample site. We have since left asteroid Bennu, and the last challenge is ahead of us. We have to get that sample return capsule back down to the surface of the Earth, and that is happening on September 24th of 2023. The College of Science at the University of Arizona has helped me since I was a freshman here in 1988. I enrolled in the theoretical math program, added a double major in physics, and ultimately got the NASA Space Grant program, which is based out of the Department of Planetary Sciences. So it educated me, took care of me. I got jobs when I was an undergrad as a math tutor. And so I've always felt a deep connection to the U of A. I was a wildcat at heart really from day one here. And of course, I was amazed and thrilled when I got hired onto the faculty here at the Lunar Planetary Laboratory in 2001. And really haven't looked back ever since then. 
And I think what I'm most excited about now is the quality of the students that we have in the College of Science here at the University of Arizona. I've been privileged to mentor dozens of undergraduate students, many of them who have gone on to successful careers in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, including my current deputy principal investigator, Professor Daniela Della Giustina, who is also taking the spacecraft onto its next adventure, the OSIRIS Apex mission. After dropping off the sample from asteroid Bennu, the spacecraft continues on an extended mission called OSIRIS Apex. Apex stands for Apophis Explorer, which will be led by University of Arizona's Danny Della Justina, lead scientist with OSIRIS REx's image processing team and deputy principal investigator of the OSIRIS REx mission. In October 2023, the OSIRIS Apex mission will begin. The spacecraft will rendezvous with asteroid Apophis for an 18 month visit during the asteroid's close encounter with Earth in 2029. So asteroid Apophis is a pretty infamous object. Uh, when it was discovered in 2004, there was an initial scare that this asteroid would collide with our own planet in 2029. So astronomers took more data of this asteroid and they eventually decided that no, it's, it's, the probability is very low, it's not gonna impact the Earth in 2029 but it might in 2036. <laughs> and so uh, subsequent data was collected. We retired that risk. We now know that Apophis does not pose a hazard to the Earth over the next 100 years. But you can imagine that during those early years, Apophis made its name in the asteroid science community since it was uh, a, a potentially hazardous object. So we now know that during that 2029 encounter, when it gets really close, the one where we thought it might impact the Earth, um, it will get within a range of distances from our own planet, about one-tenth of the distance from the Earth to the Moon, where some change might take place because Earth's gravitational field is really gonna tug on it. So we think the rotation rate, the length of a day on asteroid Apophis might change during that close encounter. And it's also possible that there might be landslides or surface changes that are triggered by Earth's gravity as it's swinging by our own planet. Apophis will be the only near-Earth asteroid in the history of human civilization that we will be able to see with the naked eye when it makes that close approach in 2029. So parts of Europe and Africa are gonna be able to see this dot of light in the sky that will be asteroid Apophis getting very, very close to Earth. So the College of Science here at the University of Arizona has helped me in a couple of really key ways. For one, the College of Science has educated me. So I got my bachelor's degree here in physics and I got my PhD here in geosciences. And all of that education and mentorship that I was provided during my time as a student here is what enabled me to pursue a degree in planetary sciences. The University of Arizona's College of Science is also home to the Lunar and Planetary Lab, which is one of the best institutions in the world to study the solar system. And so there is no way I could have had a gate for, for myself open into this field if I hadn't been here at the University of Arizona. I would tell students, especially young women who are interested in pursuing a career in this field, that if you have the passion to do it, go for it. It won't be easy. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of late night studying, probably several years of education. But if you have the drive, the motivation, the curiosity, and that passion, you should follow it because expanding the boundaries of human knowledge, which is what we do when we explore space, is truly worth it.